uh, in, the, in the introductory lecture, I spoke about the basic problem of uh, for switch on the uh, I spoke about why appear as a historical research direction in the United States, environmental history. Because if we are looking, for example, uh, evolution of, of European history, we are living from the Bronze Age, 6,000 years ago, transformed physical environment. Because even in the uh, Europe, in Europe and the Near East and the uh, Mediterranean Basin, introduced even 6,000 years uh, ago, a uh, uh, agrarian activity. Therefore, generation by generation, lead transform physical environment. In the case of the United States, northern part of America, a little bit uh, basically different the situation. Because the f uh, before the European conquistador, it's an exaggeration a little bit, but from the east coast to the west coast, over a huge forest area. It's exaggeration, but uh, because large area, a local Indian population transformed the physical environment, but the basic character didn't change. And in the, the process of uh, uh, transformation of physical environment in the uh, American history started deeply only at the turn of 18th and 19th century. Therefore, the memories of generation save the condition before the transformation. Not by chance, for example, a very famous uh, uh, study book about the American environmental history, the title Nature of Nation. How transformed the nature of nation. And for example, you know, prob uh, uh, probably uh, the books and the novels about the, the uh, Indian stories, the Western movies, for example. Uh, the people living in the frontier area, uh, in the Wild West, and necessary to save themselves with weapons. Not by chance, the using the arms and the weapons, it's a fundamentally, uh, uh, fundamentally law, fundamentally needs of American society. Recently, there is a great discussion about it. But it came back to the uh, frontier and the Western, wide Western uh, memories. And uh, uh, American school, a little bit special direction of environmental research. Uh, the first, uh, uh, first uh, scholar who uh, wrote down the most important, uh, uh, most important conclusion about this interaction, Henry David Toro. He received, uh, he uh, graduated at the Harvard University. Probably you know the story of Harvard University, unbelievable. Because Harvard University founded in the 17th century, a very young priest died and they made a foundation. A very small foundation. But generation by generation increased the library of the priest and, uh, and the foundation and 400 years later became the one of the best universities. It's evolutionary thinking. It's very important, very important uh, uh, peculiarity of the civilization if somebody able to think according to evolution. And uh, a similar story uh, a punch turning. This is the this is the uh, currency of uh, 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 United Kingdom. Kingdom, sorry. Uh, somebody know when introduced the punch turning? 16th century. Uh, 15, uh, 1562. Not by it's obviously when uh, offered to United Kingdom inside of European Union, introduction of Euro, nobody accepted. Because using a currency uh, introduced even in the 16th century. A little bit the same situation. Evolution, evolutionary thinking. Okay, look at the story of Toro. Uh, Toro came from a, a family of senators. This is the aristocracy of uh, American society. But after his diploma, the graduation, didn't receive job. It's a quite a general. I remember my story when I graduated before the graduation, no chance for uh, any job. Therefore, it's, it's a, one of the most critical periods of life. 
uh, the first uh, critical period when I had to go to the kindergarten. Uh, I remember when my mother would like to push into the kindergarten, I ran out <laughs> regularly. But the most comfortable place of education is a university because it's a quite free, it's a great uh, freedom for option different courses like mm -hmm. you. Uh, and uh, after the university, going into the job market, it's a, one of the in my life, anyway, the greatest challenge was. And the uh, uh, situation of Toro happened the same. He didn't receive after the Harvard University any job. Therefore, left the civilization, went to the right uh, physical environment, moved to the Warden. You know this story? It's a quite a, a famous in American environmental uh, library, uh, literature, sorry. Uh, and the Warden. It's uh, uh, a forest area, uh, very far from the civilized world, and lived alone, and wrote poems. It's a romantic period we are, uh, during the first half of uh, 19th century, and try to unify our uh, Puritan tradition. You know, Puritan, it's a, uh, it's a reformed church tradition in the United States living together a lot of different reformed church, uh, Anabaptists, for example, uh, Calvinists, Lutheranians, and so, and uh, even Amish, it's a very uh, special, uh, very, very special uh, uh, old-style uh, religious community. And uh, my guess, because there is an American student in the audience, uh, which is the highest uh, uh, proportion of immigrants came from Europe, which nation exported the most uh, immigrant to the United States? English, Irish, Scandinavian, German, Italian, which one? And it's a question, it's a guess, it's open for you. Uh, English? No. No? No. German. It's very surprising. German? German. But why we don't speak German? in the United States because the first generation of immigrants came from England and the first institution founded by uh, English style and the official language became by English and when arrived a lot of Germans uh, the first wave assimilated uh, when arrived the second one only the close religious communities say the original like Amish, you know this Amish community uh, say the original German language, but if calculate and recon the proportion, much higher the Germans. Okay, turn back to the story. Uh, try to unify uh, a reformed church tradition with a pagan Indian culture and wrote a lot of mystical poems during uh, this time. Uh, and uh, this is the Vardan period, it's a three years leave and turned back to the society and became the founder of mystic proto ecologist school. Uh, Rodrik Nash, who made a term of environmental history, the title of this discipline, uh, it's a very famous uh, uh, scholar of the uh, University of California. It's a famous mention of him. America contributed only three things to the global civilization, coke, and a little bit of exaggeration, but it's a very good term, uh, and basketball and national parks. But the national parks, uh, basically different was yet recently. Why? You know, for example, the cartoon of Yogi Bear, Bear, Yogi Bear. It's a picnic area, much more. Recently, a national park, a closed area. Closed area, only the scholars and the, uh, and the employees of national parks may walk in inside of the closed and safe uh, area. But on the original national parks, there was a picnic area, a recreation area, much more. Uh, the first uh, protected area was the Auburn Mountain in the, on the east coast, and very important, Whole of the United, uh, Europe, uh, whole of uh, United States, the second one, the second protected area was the famous Central Park in New York. And the first national park, whole of the world, the Yellowstone. Okay, uh, and uh, the second, the third crucial person of uh, American school, Rachel Carson. 
Richard Carson is a typical uh, American, uh, American intellectual. Why? Because in the uh, European tradition, much more typical that the general reader, the public, and the academic university were separate from Duan. In the United States, and according to my experiences too, uh, scholars try to publish, uh, for example, books uh, for general reader, for the public. It's not successful uh, in uh, Europe. Why? Because uh, the education system, former time I spoke about here, uh, if we are looking at the education system, basically, too basically different. It's a European style, basically the German one, under pressure the, 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 the pupils, uh, by uh, teacher and by parents, uh, learning a lot of elementary information, year by year. Therefore, the average level of education much higher compared with the American school. Because, uh, to my, you, you have practical information, but uh, my information is it's, uh, partly theoretical, but I work together with American students at the Central European University, when Central European University located at the Budapest. Uh, and to my experiences, a uh, basic difference between the European style and American style education system, a Euro uh, uh, Europeans underweight a lot of elementary information necessary to learn. Therefore, the strategy of Europeans is a survival. A survival only. And walk into the lecture room, which is the reaction of European style student, avoid the eye contact, <laughs> save the most important organs, and somehow necessary survive, which is the reaction of America, because American education system much more a character building system, necessary to, to, to learn the communication, rhetorical skills, for example, arguing beside one opinion or others, much more, not so much information necessary to learn, therefore the education level is uh, a little bit Europe in a little bit higher. But the character much better. For example, when I taught at the University of Central Europe, the Central European University, if open the discussion, the normal reaction that uh, European avoid the NEA contact, and the American student would like to raise the hand, no any information, but would like to discuss about something. Okay, uh, good, good. Richard Carson was a typical American intellectual and scholar. He published original, uh, uh, original orientation, uh, it's a C biology. And uh, he published a lot of uh, uh, book about the problem of environmental, uh, use of environment and, and pollution of physical environment. And, uh, why so important was this book of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Richard Carson, the, the sea around us about pollution on the sea, and the, the most seminal book of him was The Silent Spring. A Silent Spring, this is the, when published The Silent Spring, 1962, this is the zero year of formation of global environmental thinking. Why? Because originally ecology was a subdiscipline of biology. Uh, analyze the biotope, it's a physical environment, and biocenosis, it's a community of animals, no more. And uh, Richard Carson analyzed how to transform a physical environment on, after the Second World War. Why interesting the Second World War, after the uh, second, uh, second World War period? Because in the 50s and the 60s, this was the greatest economic growth, whole of the human history. For 25 years, like a racket, it's grew up the European economy. And the global, not your global economy. Unbelievable. Increase the population. Look at the trajectory of population. On the starting date of Christian calendar, on the official birth day, birth year of Jesus Christ, the population of humankind 
two or three hundred thousand, uh, 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 no, three hundred million, two or three hundred million inhabitants. At the beginning of 19th century, reached the one million, or American English, one billion. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Turn to the American English. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of 19th century, one billion. On the time of the closing year of Second World War, uh, zero uh, or, or one, it's a two or three hundred million. On the approximately 1821 billion, on the Closing year of Second World War, it's 1945, 2.5 billion, and 2000, at the end of Second millennium, it's 6 billion. And recently, we are around 8 billion. You can see it's half century was enough almost not a little bit more than double the European uh, global population. Be behind this growth was unbelievable economic growth. Appearance of new agriculture. A new agriculture. Why so important? Because uh, some, uh, somebody know which is the size of soil. How many meters? It's a global average. How many meters of soil? It's a free question. No failure. No. No. Half meter. Unbelievable. Because survival of humankind depends on the half meter. And majority of soil, it's an agrarian soil, under chemotherapy. Pesticizer and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, fertilizers uh, using for the uh, saving of fertility. Therefore, increased unbelievable level of productivity, not possible, no other way, because uh, uh, the, the growth of population is so high. And introduced a new chemical weapons. Uh, it was a chemical weapons like an atomic bomb in the, in the military operation, DDT. DDT. Uh, DDT killed each of insects. I remember during my childhood, even Hungary used the DDT. Because so efficient, mm -hmm. but there is a so problem with the DDT, may cancer, mm -hmm. may cancer for the human. This is the one. The second problem, there is a chain of consumption. Start with insect and closing from lions. And take one brick from, uh, one, one chain from the chain of consumption, it's all of that broken down. Which introduced, for example, some area, a DDT, kill each animals because the lower chain it's take out from the chain and no feeding possibilities any other animals therefore the final conclusion of Richard Carson one day we will open the windows and no any noises no any noises because kill everything no kill kill the bird kill the animals everything sometimes happens uh, some area it happens. For example, a former year I had a Chinese uh, uh, student, and before the uh, before the uh, the exam, discussed a little bit for for warming up, uh, and I asked uh, came from Beijing. It's the capital of uh, China, and which is the new experience uh, uh, in Saget for you? And he she told to me, listen, birds. Because in Beijing, no birds, mm -hmm. no birds. Okay, this is the same situation which described why Rachel Carson. It's a very simple. If you open ecological journals and ecological books, everything that the human will destroy all of the civilization. But on that time, it was a revolutionary thought, revolutionary. And this is the starting day when ecology became a global thinking. Not only the subdiscipline of biology, but two directions launched this process. Ecopolitics and 
Each discipline made a ecological direction. Eco philosophy, ecological philosophy, ecological history, uh, ecological economics, uh, ecological uh, philosophy, everything. Each discipline reflected, uh, became a global thinking. Uh, this is the demonstration what happened behind the uh, conclusion of, uh, of uh, and analysis of Rachel Carson, a pesticide production uh, from uh, 40s to the end of the uh, uh, 20th century. And uh, global fertilizer, pesticide and fertilizer, any other, it's unbelievable. Ah, unbelievable. Ah. But very interesting, recently I am listening to agrarian podcast. It's very interesting because no political subject, it's a very well defined material. And very interesting information, some days ago I listened to uh, Compost, this is the name of uh, Hungarian podcast, uh, spoke about, discussed about that the first great agrarian revolution based to chemical industry. Because the pesticide and fertilizer chemical products. But recently, in consequence of mechanization and arti artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, we introduced the hoeing robots. You know which is the hoe. It's a mechanical tools which not necessarily using, but the robots launch uh, terminators, <laughs> launch to the uh, regular land and no contain the next generation a chemical addicts because this is the basic problem if you buy for example potato and, uh, and vegetables there is a critical level of chemicals inside of the of the of the bulb of the potato inside of the of the bread for example ev ev everywhere but it's very interesting if we'll function this uh, this technological revolution we will cancel the but in the 20th century the background of agrarian revolution was a uh, chemistry. Okay, two directions launched in consequence of ecological thinking, environmental policy and movement, and environmental researches. Basically, I will speak about the results of environmental researches, but uh, I speak a little bit about the environmental policies and, uh, uh, and uh, movements. The first Earth Day which recently is a global fast. Uh, it's organized in the United States uh, in consequence of Senator Gaylord Nelson and uh, uh, it's happened uh, 1970, uh, 70, uh, uh, 22nd April. And recently this is the global fast. And the second one, recently the most uh, famous global uh, ecological organization, ecological uh, protection organization of Greenpeace, which founded in Canada, but majority of founders came from the United States. It is a basically American organization. I am a supporter of mm -hmm. Greenpeace because uh, uh, Greenpeace uh, didn't uh, accept uh, uh, support only from the person, no any uh, or any organization, personal support, it's possible. Okay. Uh, uh, next important milestone about, uh, uh, in the case of uh, environmental thinking, foundation of Club of Rome. A Club of Rome, it's uh, a little bit joint venture. I mean, uh, uh, approximately 100 person participate in the Club of Rome. Half of participants came from the academic world, it's a scholars and half businessmen and try to find somehow the compromise in the modern how able to apply ecological aspect in the practice in the practical work uh, and the first uh, uh, the, the second report uh, the most famous mankind and the turning points and basically the global thinking and sustainable growth was the crucial concept of them uh, the first global conference about the environmental problems organized in Stockholm under the direction of the uh, of, uh, United Nations uh, and uh, it's uh, the detailed information 113 countries representative and uh, 19 intergovernmental agencies and so on and so on. Uh, not so important decision happened in the uh, Stockholm, University, uh, Stockholm uh, conference but this was the first declaration 
that the ecological problem became a global problem. The next one, Brunthen Commission. Brunthen Gro Brunthen was the Prime Minister of Nor Norway and organized a quite uh, limited uh, research team for finding the most important direction of, uh, of uh, long-term uh, environmental uh, decisions framework and introduced uh, recently, it's very uh, lot of lot of discussion there are around uh, this concept, which introduced by Brutal Commission, sustainable growth. Sustainable growth. Why so sensible? Because we are living recently in the uh, uh, self-sustainable growth period. In the historical past, no uh, continuous growth, because in the biological world, only one. Uh, self-sustainable growth process we know, a cancer, a cancer, no any other. If we are looking back to, for example, Chinese history, European history, and any other history, there is a race, up and down, up and down. But since the Industrial Revolution, we are living on the time of self-sustainable growth. And our mentality following the self-sustainable uh, uh, self-sustainable uh, concept. For example, uh, we are sure that the uh, next iPhone will be better than the last. Mm -hmm. it's, it's programmed us for the improving, improving, improving. In the practice is not true because if we are looking, for example, uh, recently, for example, the social sensibility, reason of social uh, sensibility of, of recent time that uh, uh, we are the first generation after the Second World War who don't live in better than the former generation. But in the brain, in the modern thinking, focuses everything better and better in the future. Sustainable growth was a compromise somehow between the pressure of growth and the limited resources. But one of the crucial problems of our time, we are living in uh, the technology of 19th century. What we? If we are looking at the technological uh, devices around us, combustive engine introduced in the 19th century. The T model, not the same that the BMW recently, BMW recently, but the basic, it's a combustive engine and the basic uh, uh, construction the much higher level, the services, but any other, the same like in the 19th century. Uh, using uh, oil, using the coal, using the gas, introduced even, and even the electrical engine introduced in the 19th century. The 20th century only take into, uh, beside this 19th century innovation, uh, atomic energy, a nuclear energy which very sensible topic. But recently one of the basic problems of our ecological and environmental and technological situation, we are living in the 19th century. And no able to preview a great jump to the higher uh, energetical level, we are able to, to, to growing up. Uh, look at the comparison. For example, in the traditional time, uh, uh, tree and the wooden material was displayed the same position like recently the fossil fuel. If somebody had large forest, a lot of wooden material was the same like recently Saudi Arabia or, or, the, or, the, or, the, fossil, or the oil emirates. Why? Because from wooden material able to construct building, able to construct ships able to construct bridges, able to use, for example, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for heating. Everything who had a wooden material and the timber used everywhere, like recently the fossil fuels. And uh, the most important uh, production of timber material was the charcoal. You know which is the charcoal? Charcoal. Okay, uh, why is so important the charcoal? It's a technological peculiarity, but very important crucial element of, of, uh, of traditional Europe. 
with help of charcoal, which made in the forest area, uh, able to make iron and steel. Why? Because making iron necessary at least 7,000 uh, kilojoule heating energy. Three, it's a simple uh, three material able to produce two or three thousand kilojoule. It's very simple, boring information. Why became so crucial innovation of traditional society? Because in the normal situation on the, on the forest area made charcoal. Making of charcoal is a very simple operation. Taking the timber here, covering with clay and making two holes, burning and smoking and time by its very slow burning process the timber material transformed to charcoal. It's named a plane of forest because for one unit charcoal necessary 10 unit timber material. Therefore, a charcoal maker appeared by forest, it's over. Uh, started this career, for example, it's innovated in Anatolia. Recently, it's uh, a central part of recent Turkey. This is the innovation here. And look at the history of England. In the England, a uh, charcoal maker destroyed all of the forest. On that time, the closest colony of uh, England was Ireland. Ireland, before 17th century, large forest area. If you know, for example, even the, the touristical picture, it's a small bushes and the unbelievable large grazing land. This is the consequence of uh, English metallurgy arrived to the colony. I Ireland was a colony. And the Irish people and English people hate to each other. Very continuously, very continuously. For example, even at the end of the uh, uh, 20th century was a uh, Irish Republic Army. And for example, it's a shooting the governmental district of London. In the 90s even, 20, uh, 30 years ago. Therefore, it's a very deep uh, conflict. Okay, uh, in Ireland, destroyed whole of the forest because for the it is in the time of making the great colonies of the colony uh, empire of uh, British uh, Empire therefore necessary uh, iron and steel for that destroyed all of the whole of the Irish forest and no material for metallurgy in the middle of 18th century an uh, engineer invented there is a technology for improving the heating energy of coal. It's cox making, you know, it's possible. Uh, somehow compress, compress uh, heating material with some technology, I don't know uh, the, the, the detail of them, but the coal, the normal black or brown coal converted, transformed for metallurgy. Jump up to the technology and not necessarily using the timber, and the timber became a simple material. In consequence of, of, uh, of technological jump, uh, change the level, change the level of uh, technological science, the civilization. Uh, why so important? Because if we are looking at the technological background of uh, civilization, uh, in the traditional time, majority of humans use the muscle power. Of, uh, of humans. But in consequence of the industrial revolution, using the fossil fuels, our humankind step to the same level that the, uh, for example, volcanoes, earthquakes, and the cyclone on the atmosphere. The geological level. We step from, for example, the same league, like, for example, any other animals, to the league of geological power, geologi geological level. Okay. Uh, therefore, for the modern economy, the growth is crucial. Open, for example, the journals, which is the good news, growth, economic growth, which is the bad news, economic decline. 
Therefore, sustainable growth somehow would like to compromise ecological interest and economic interest. And uh, the next international global uh, uh, conference was Rio de Janeiro, uh, basically focused to the uh, pollution, toxic components of, uh, uh, of industrial activities, poisonous waste problem, alternative uh, source of energy. There is uh, probably you, you, you listened about the fusion reactor. During my childhood, uh, forecasting that fusion reactor will arrive for 40 years. When I was a student, the forecast was fusion reactor will arrive 40. The same distance. Recently, the general opinion, therefore, we are before, because the fusion energy, which simulates somehow the nuclear fusion in the sun, mm. and able to produce, but recently, the humankind uh, tried to jump to the higher level, but according to our experience, not able for that. And the fusion reactor may be a solution, like a coal transformation on the time of industrial revolution. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, health problem caused polluted air and smoke, and scarcity of water. And very interesting, probably you know the uh, series of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, 007 uh, agents, it's a uh, GIF bomb. And uh, uh, it's very sensible because the, uh, the, the episodes of James Bond re reflect somehow the global problems. And for example, uh, two before was focused on the scarcity of water, scarcity of the water. And uh, even at the beginning of 90s, in the uh, scientific communities, focused beside the pollution, the scarcity of the water. At the next conference, the Kyoto Protocol, uh, it's uh, declared first time the problem of uh, global warming. Uh, global warming. It's a very interesting problem, the global warming, because at the beginning of uh, this century, the 21st century, uh, not generally was not generally accepted uh, concept that there is or there is not a global warming. Why? If we are looking at the trajectory of the change of uh, temperature of 20th century, we can follow the next trajectory. This is the beginning of 20th century and this is the end of second millennium. This is the long-term average. If we are looking how change the temperature in the global level, at the beginning of 20th century there is a uh, uh, very steady but very moderate warming. And very interesting, nobody realized. Why? Because it's uh, a little bit more moderate, not so uh, cold, the winter time a little bit. But it's, it's improved the physical condition. It's a very important activity of the human nature. If somebody improved, not react. Because it's normal, a little bit better. And uh, until the end of the uh, uh, 30s, it was a continuous warming. But uh, in the 30s, it's steady, and in the uh, 1940s, became colder and colder. If you remember the story of Second World War, for example, Battle of Stalingrad in Russia, it's very cold, very cold. And each of winter, each of winter in the middle of the 20th century was very cold. Uh, for example, very famous, the, uh, the siege of uh, Budapest, capital of Hungary. And for example, in zoo of capital, only two animals survived the long, 100 days long uh, siege. My guess, which animal? Rat. Nah, <laughs> rat, is, rat is not, not a, uh, a, a oh. zoo, classical zoo animal. It's a volunteers. It's a volunteers everywhere. <laughs> okay, which animal? My guess. Camel. Camel. Why? Because the camel is a very hard, with very high endurance. Camel. No. Hippopotamus. Oh. 
You know the hippopotamus? Mm. Hippopotamus is very dangerous animal. Mm. Very, very dangerous animal. If we are looking at the statistical uh, year statistics in Africa, more people die for the assault of hippo, hippopotamus than lions. Because uh, the people uh, misunderstood the behavior of hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, it's very, it's looking, it's a, a giant, it's very slow, it's not true. Uh, short distance, it's a quicker and faster than the horse. Uh, and very aggressive, very aggressive. And uh, moreover, uh, very special the location of Budapest. There is a, a geological rupture line. Therefore, there is a warm water, warm vats. And the basin of uh, hippopotamus flow a natural valves of hot water. And the hippopotamus didn't have the basin. Therefore, in the warm period, it's the best behavior, if a safe place and survive. Okay, uh, turn back to this. Yeah, uh, I didn't close. Okay, in the middle of 20th century, it uh, became a little bit colder. And the last cold year was 1963, uh, this is the year of my birth, uh, and started, uh, restarted the forming. And the turning point, the turning point is 1988. Why so important? Because if, for example, we try to understand the trend of process, obviously, uh, beside the curve we can follow, it's obviously the warming trend. But if close this period, not obvious that this is the warm, but uh, since the 1988, in consequence, using the oils, the crude using of oils, for example, in the, uh, uh, for example, in the uh, transport of uh, uh, huge giant vessels, which is the term so it's a, it's a huge, uh, huge uh, uh, ships, uh, it's a tankers and then any other, for example, uh, somebody know how many person uh, 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 apply the, the, the transport, uh, on maritime transport, on seaborne transport, how, uh, the global transport, how many person? Nine, nine. 90% anyway at the beginning of 21st century 90% it's a seaborne transport uh, and, and uh, uh, not by chance for example recently there is a, a problem with the uh, how the name uh, between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea how the name is uh, Suez oh, it's a strait of Suez it's it's crucial problem crucial problem because the global transport uh, it's uh, based to a maritime giants, huge uh, vessels, huge vessels, which consume, for example, one uh, fleet of uh, giant vessels, consume, and the ecological footprint, like a smaller country, a small country, uh, and using a huge quantity of oil, increase so high the greenhouse gases, for example, carbon dioxide, Methane uh, vapor, for example, water vapor on the on the atmosphere that started uh, and increased the speed of global warming. And the problem of global warming appeared first time in the conference of Kyoto, and try to somehow minimize uh, uh, minimize of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, quantity of. Uh, of uh, uh, greenhouse gases, and in consequence of greenhouse gases, increased the uh, increased uh, uh, started uh, growing uh, temperature. And why so great problem growing at temperature? Because if imagine, for example, the Earth and the atmosphere, the process is the next. This is the Earth. This is the trajectory around the sun. This is the sun, and uh, this is the axis of the of the Earth. Turn around. Increase the intensity of warming in consequence of greenhouse effects. And this is the equator. 
this is the equator, and around the equator there are a radiation surface. Radiation in and radiation out, it produces a surface. Therefore, it's very hot according to and very high according to energy. If you are going into the direction to the poles, the surplus decreases step by step and uh, in the pole area, two poles area, it's not surplus but uh, it's deficit R. Therefore, we can understand how function the climate, how function the atmosphere. Atmosphere and the ocean distribute the tropical surface, uh, surface around all of the Earth. For example, air masses and air, uh, for example, cyclones and, and uh, uh, air currents and ocean currents. Ocean currents like, for example, um, Gulf currents or, or how the name is, uh, 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 Atlantic currents distribute the tropical surface. First, second one, if increase the warming, increase the energy. Therefore, the currents, tropical, uh, not tropical, uh, uh, atmospherical and uh, uh, maritime uh, currents intensity circulation, sorry, not currents, in the atmosphere circulation, in the uh, ocean is a current. Our atmosphere circulation became more and more intense. Therefore, the storms, for example, the rains, any other became more and more and more. Therefore, not the problem, not the basic problem, the temperature, but the intensity of circulation became a critical because environmental disaster and more and more. Moreover, our fragility of modern society increased. Why? Because everybody would like to live on the seaside and like lakeside and riverside. Look at the traditional society. Nobody would like to live because it's a dangerous place. Look at the storms, for example, invasion, it's a uh, political or military reason. Living in very near to the water body, it's maybe a sea or lake or, or, or river, it's a dangerous, it's very dangerous. But recently, 10% of the global population living on the sea and very close or directly on the sea side area. Look at the, for example, tsunami, was uh, happened in the uh, Indian uh, Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean. Nobody lived in the traditional time on the sea side. Therefore, the fragility and, uh, and sensibility of uh, modern society much higher compared, uh, com uh, compared with the traditional uh, verb. Okay, this is the political size and the last declaration was the Paris, the commitment of Paris. But look at the environmental history. Uh, environmental history, not by chance, the first organization of environmental history founded at the United States, 97, American Society for Environmental History, if somebody is interested for, this is the web address. And uh, not by chance, because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, sensibility for American scholars much closer to the environmental problem, because it was a part of formation of nation, in Europe, a little bit less the sensibility, but very interesting, which area was more sensible for the environmental question? A peripheral area, Scandinavia. For example, Scotland, Alpine region, region of Alps, Switzerland and Austria. Why? Because in peripheral area, historically, not so high change of climate was enough for launch uh, a subsistence crisis and the famine and the shortage. Therefore, the peripheral area, the people are more sensible for the environmental questions. Okay, European Society founded in the St. Andrews University. I am one of the founders. Uh, somebody visited in the St. Andrews University. It's Scotland, very far. Uh, major, not me, but majority of royal family uh, graduated at the St. Andrews University, for example, uh, a royal couple, recently both of them and met 
at the center, uh, St. Andrews University. Beside uh, Cambridge and Oxford, this is the third famous English university. Okay, uh, how we can define? Because in the uh, rational cognition, it's a crucial, we have to define the concept. Uh, in the former uh, way I spoke about yet, but you are the newcomers, that very important we define the strategy of cognition. Because uh, recently only one generally accepted strategy of cognition we know is a rational cognition. A rational cognition, for example, a university, this is the church of rational cognition. And which is the uh, uh, which is the good and the bad side of the rational cognition. A rational cognition function uh, that everything necessary to define. For example, this is a table, this is a computer, everything necessary. If you open, for example, one article, one study, it's defined the basic concept. How, for example, describe society, atmosphere, uh, geological power, everything defined. The second one, uh, 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 conclusion, verifiable or deniable. Verifiable or den deniable. This is the uh, most important strength of rational cognition. And we are able to transfer this information. And you are able to learn this information. Pass able the information. This is the strength. But the weakness of rational cognition, no final cognition. No final cognition. Open, for example, one book published uh, 20 years ago or 50 years ago. Majority of conclusion, majority of facts, is no facts, no really facts. For example, I live together with one student uh, uh, of biology, and recently he's a biologist at the university, at the research institute of uh, Karolinski Institute in Stockholm, and he told to me that, for example, in biology, nobody cites five years. Older uh, article which older than five years because the content expired so deeply. This is the front research. A same situation in the case, of, for example, in the in the uh, in the uh, experimental physics uh, and the biology and so. But in the, for example, history, a little bit better the situation. But the content expired. The validity of content expired. Therefore, no final cognition. Uh, you remember the story uh, of uh, COVID 19s, the epidemics of COVID 19s. And the audience called the student, called the scholars, the crowd, which is the final cognition in this case. But uh, one of my friends, it's a, bi uh, it's a uh, biologist, and told to me that which is the reason one uh, scholar declared one conclusion, one declaration, other one. This is the nature of science using different uh, experimental background, different methods, different, uh, 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 how the name is, uh, uh, theoretical background. Therefore, this is the name. No final cognition, no final cognition. But recently, the people would like and ask that uh, became the scholar, became a priest, who are an online connection to the guy. But this is a basically different uh, strategy of cognition. Okay, this is the rational cognition. The weakness is no final cognition, the strength that able produce reliable information. Deniable or verifiable. Look at, for example, uh, religious cognition, which is the basic unit of religious cognition, meeting personally with God. Look at, for example, uh, uh, the life of Muhammad. Muhammad, beside Mecca, met personally with Archangel Gabriel and received the message that called to the prophet of God. And he had a final cognition. Well, look, look at the Bible. Uh, on the Bible, there is a very ambitious, uh, 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 or ambitious, uh, uh, how the name, which community, Member was uh, Jews people, a soul, uh, it's a persecuted the uh, early Christian communities. And on the crossroad of Damascus, met personally with Jesus. And lost the cognition, 
and transform to the supporter and maker and creator of early Christian uh, church. And very interesting, he was a very ambitious and very active as persecutor of Christendom and then changed the direction. The psychological character was the same. It's a good verification that the psychological character not so easy to change. It's big, from persecutor become a supporter, but the same behavior. Okay, but turn back to the story. Muhammad or Paul received a final cognition. But when I told to you about the uh, story of Paul lost the uh, lost the, uh, the cognition, lost the uh, and and uh, fainted, and nobody lost the any physical skills because for us only one story the theological cognition not able to pass one to another only telling one story about it there is a final cognition as mentioned with uh, Muhammad or St. Paul but we are not able to pass it the same with the same content in the rational cognition it's, it's possible it, it, possible and able to transfer one to other. And there is a third cognition for strategy of cognition, a magical. I, I, am not, uh, I, I know practice in the magic, magical uh, operation you have. Yeah, but uh, my, my, my relation to the magical practice is uh, uh, it's a little bit skeptical, but not skeptical, I don't believe. But I can imagine everything. I can imagine everything. Why I tell this story for you? Because I'm at the university. This is the uh, place of rational cognition. But very important to be honest. A uh, rational cognition able to open one way only, but not the whole of the world. And the religious cognition open other windows, and the magical other one. But recently, only the rational cognition generally accepted uh, concept whole of the world. Okay, turn back to the story of formation of environmental history. Because uh, it's very important to tell you, because uh, uh, recently quite generally accepted the, only the scientific facts, it's, it's able to cover whole of the world. It's not true. It's not true. It's only one, one slice of the world able to describe. Okay. Uh, Donald Hughes, some years ago, died, unfortunately. He was one of the most important person of American environmental history. He published, uh, at the beginning of the uh, uh, 21st century, a very seminal studies about uh, uh, environmental history. And it's a definition, how able to describe one research field, define. How you can describe the inside nature and the boundaries. The first Three criteria, uh, cri uh, criteria used for defined environmental history. The first one, a culture and the nature is a continuum. It's a part, whole of the world. It's described and described an ecosystem. It's a physical environment and society living together, the same unit, the same organization. The second one, a methodology. Whole of method usable. Whole of method usable from physical uh, and uh, natural, uh, from uh, uh, how the name, uh, 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 social sciences to natural sciences. And very important, if we analyze the gas systems, using a time and space concept. Because uh, history unfolding in time and in space, too. Good. We are over the general background. The second and the last introductory chapter, the methodology. How we can able verify that in the historical past, the physical environment changed. If we are looking at uh, how ch the, the crucial element of the climate, of the environmental change, it's a kind of force we can de describe inside of the physical environment. The climate influence the vegetation, influence the water, uh, inside uh, uh, of the soil or, 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 or in lake and, and, uh, and uh, rivers, 
and uh, able to chemical process of soil, the climate and the weather in short term is a guiding force. If we try to describe how uh, able to reconstruct changing in physical environment, uh, two basic directions are. The first are field evidences. Later, a little bit more detailed manner, I try to demonstrate the physical chemical biological evidences and documentary evidences, uh, written and iconographic evidences. And between field and documentary evidences, archaeological uh, evidences. Uh, it's very interesting working in archaeological site. Somebody work archaeology. It's very interesting, very interesting because somehow uh, I, during my secondary school, two years, two, two, two summer time, I uh, work uh, in uh, archaeological sites. It's very interesting because somehow uh, people, there is impression about, uh, about the past, uh, using and, uh, and discovering of, of tools. But other one, uh, one of the most recent that I became a part of history, uh, uh, I socialized an old traditional society. Uh, uh, the the, the uh, birthday, my birthday is here, introduced the, uh, the water uh, uh, supply in my village. Not in Africa, in Europe. Uh, before that, and uh, during my childhood, uh, no uh, any uh, water service, and we walked to the well. On the, on the village had four wells, and no more, four wells, sorry. No, no water su supply, electrical supply, oh. electric supply, sorry. Because water supply uh, introduced to, the, uh, to my village when I moved to the secondary school, much later. But electric supply. Therefore, for example, uh, there is a problem with my, with, with my uh, daughters and with my sons because my son uh, was born uh, 2008. 2008. And I tell my stories about my childhood and told to me I am not like to listen. <laughs> so far, so far. Because, uh, for example, uh, my daughter was born, uh, uh, my older daughter, because I have, I have three daughters and one son, uh, my oldest uh, daughter was born 1990, and uh, she knew, for example, the cassettes, the classical compact cassettes. And for my son, even the DVD, this is an uh, industrial, archaeological product, so far. So, quickly change the uh, change our technological environment of us. Anyway, uh, I remember during my childhood, uh, it's the first year of electrical surface, for uh, a village's uh, boy was an uh, obligation visiting all these relatives and looking in good or bad condition. And I remember one, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, my, uh, my grandmother's uh, 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 sister, uh, it's quite old, she had 10, 10 children, 10. And his uh, husband died very early and she was alone. Unbelievable, very close to the story of Jesus Christ, able to uh, how organize the basic condition of survival. And I remember uh, my mother told to me visit to uh, this uh, sister of my grandmother, uh, discover the physical condition because it's uh, somehow it's a traditional society. This was a normal reaction, a job of, uh, of uh, young boys and young girls. And I remember I visited very, very small, a smaller one, his building was than this lecture room. How was able to, uh, to, to survive with 10, uh, child, 10 children and, uh, and learn one book. And uh, I uh, told to her that I am here and how, which condition you are. Uh, and uh, I asked uh, which uh, book uh, you are uh, she uh, uh, reading. And turn, this is the Anna Karenina from Tolstoy. Because Anna had a very bad and very heavy life, and she's like, there is an overlap in some mm -hmm. And uh, she told to me a story. Uh, she was born uh, at the end of 19th century, mm -hmm. and she told to me stories about the beginning 
of 19th century, which listened from the older people. That was unbelievable, like a, a space, uh, a, a time telescope. I am speaking one old lady, and I am able to see what happened 150 years ago. Not on the archive, in the oral history. It was very impressive. Too. Okay, turn back to the story. Uh, archaeological evidence field and documentary evidences. Good. Uh, the first uh, great metal and technology which very fine that uh, uh, in the historical past, in, in the time of uh, human history, the physical environment able to change, very fine, a dendrochronology. Probably you know, for example, a huge down trees, there is a tree wreath. Each year unfolding and develop a tree ring. Very easy to, uh, for example, recon the age of tree if we count a number of tree rings. Moreover, the, not only the number but the structure of tree able to demonstrate how change the weather in these years. And uh, uh, the, this method introduced an American scholar, not by chance, Andrew Enrico Douglas, and, uh, uh, which help of this technology able to estimate anyway the age of tree and reconstruct how change uh, weather on the circle and on the closed environment of the trees. And with help of, uh, with help of uh, tree re reconstruction, reconstructed the climate changes. And in Europe, a little bit uh, worse the situation because in the uh, United States there is a long life trees, a bibliocon tree, for a bibliocon pine neighbor living 5,000 years. But in Europe, the oak only, the one tree, it's a long life tree. The longest one is uh, five or 600 years. But uh, introduced a floating tree technology that uh, the first is a tree. Uh, came from the living tree, the second, for example, uh, one building or one cathedral, because the roof of the cathedral is constructed from the, uh, from, from the beams, and the peat box, and overlapping, overlapping the different uh, curves, able to make a long live trees. Uh, North Ireland is uh, one of the longest one, one uh, 5,452, uh, and the uh, Rhine Valley is in Germany 8,480. It's a long uh, chronology, and with help of long tree chronology, verified that it's not true that uh, uh, it's uh, unchanged, uh, unchanged the physical environment, but changed a lot. Changed a lot. The second one was isotope analysis. On the atmosphere, there are two variants of uh, oxygen, the 16 or 18. As 18 proportion of the normal proportion, 1 to 500. Therefore, the stable one is uh, 16 and the unstable is the 18. And the proportion of the 18 isotope depend on the temperature and some ice-covered area that, for example, uh, uh, Greenland, it's a huge glacier, it's uh, drilled, a uh, very long sample, this is the picture of the sample, and reconstructed to more thousand years how changed the climate. And once uh, I was a, a fellow at the uh, Brno University in the Czech Republic, Czechia, and I met a geographer who participated in the project of, uh, of uh, Greenland. Uh, because Greenland is uh, international. It's officially part of the Denmark, but practically it's an uh, 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 international uh, field of the, of the international research. And some nation organized a, a, a basis, a national basis of research in different parts of the Greenland. And for example, Czechia based one research laboratory uh, in, in uh, Greenland. And very interesting, on the free, it's very cold, very cold. Uh, it's, uh, uh, for example, it's a classical Russian joke uh, that uh, why no uh, a, a rap 
in uh, Siberia because not able to survive on the street. <laughs> no chance for that. A little bit same situation with, uh, in the case of uh, Greenland that uh, it's, it's very heavy to live. That therefore, for example, uh, if somebody walking to the field trip, the first before the field trip going to the toilet because if uh, minus 35, no chance for the open air using of uh, uh, this service. Therefore, but very interesting, very popular, drinking of short drinks. Mm -hmm. And there is a competition between different bases. And there is a, a link, a, a, a championship link, it's communicated the different national bases uh, one to other. And the winner is Russia. <laughs> Of course. Mm -hmm. But my guest, my last guest today, and your national prejudice in Zabo, which is the second one? Uh, uh, so you said that all different countries have. Different countries, but there is a, a very, very, everybody, every, every base is different how many liter. Uh, uh, short drink, drunk, year, uh, week by week. And there is a, a for example, a um, uh, moving uh, curve <laughs> which follow uh, the consummation, but the different uh, class is a Russian uh, scholars. But which nation is the second in the international comp competition? Is the second one? German? Not German. Br British. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, sorry, one story because during my childhood it was a uh, socialist country, much closer connection to, uh, to Soviet Union. Therefore, uh, because partly I'm a geographer, we traveled to Odessa, unbelievable place. It's a very, uh, on the northern uh, harbor of uh, Black Sea, and uh, unbelievable place. For example, whole of the harbor covered with the rocks of Vesuv, volcano Vesuv because exported a lot of grain, a lot of cereals, and uh, the vessels sailed to Mediterranean area and opened back and, and uh, turned back empty. And one uh, merchant of Odessa imagined so funny that whole of the whole of the harbor covering with uh, rocks of volcano vessel and bombed. It's a Russian, Russian style, <laughs> bombed. And uh, if you walk, for example, after the war, I hope, because unbelievable place, it's cover whole of the volcano mm -hmm. of Vesuvius. Okay, but second one, Russian first. Uh, Who are the second? Ireland. No. The Russian. No, the French. Really no French. <laughs> no. If somebody socialized through the wine, mm -hmm. short drinks, <laughs> not so much. Uh, no Scandinavian. Hungarian base is not founded, it's a small country. Polish. Um. Why? Because if you uh, looking for example the international statistics of a vodka maker, Poland is the second one. Moreover, for more than 100 years, Poland was one uh, district of Russia. Oh. Because in the, uh, at the end of the uh, 18th century, majority of Poland conquered by Russia. Therefore, the Polish lived under Russian flag and he was the best pupil in this sense. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. We will continue with this uh, slide and majority of material which goes and switch on the video. Sorry for my